All right, so on your equation sheet, and the, the front side of the equation sheet is the, the one that has the heading where it says advanced placement chemistry equations and constants. And I want you to look in this middle section where it says equilibrium. And look at what is given to you, right? The first two equations listed there should look familiar to you, okay? That is material that we covered last class. The one that says KC and KP, we talked about those. Everything else in that section where you see like KAs, KBs, KWs, some stuff with pH, that, those are equations that we will cover when we get to chapters 14 and 15. Okay, so don't worry about those for the moment. But let's look at that first equation that is given to you in that section where it says KC equals. Do you remember what the C stands for? Concentration, okay? And what's written after it is what's called an equilibrium expression. Remember that the word expression means we're not plugging in numbers yet. We're not calculating anything yet. All right, it was just molarity of the products divided by molarity of the reactants. Remember that the coefficients become the exponents. And if C stands for concentration, the one that is below it, what do all those P's stand for? Partial pressures, yeah, okay. And just to see if you remember, what are the two states of matter that it is permissible to include in a KC expression? Gases and aqueous, okay. And in a KP expression? Gases only. Okay, good. All right, scan your eyes over to the right, and you'll see a whole bunch of equilibrium constants. KC, KP, KA, KB, KW. All right, KC and KP, you should know, because we talked about it. But the others, again, we will talk about in third quarter when we get to chapters 14 and 15. And remember that on the other side of the sheet, at the top, is all of your gas laws stuff. And some of your constants are given there. Your ideal gas law constants are over on the right-hand side. Your pressure conversions are given to you. Okay, so there's good stuff on here. This one is yours to keep, so if you want to, you know, highlight it, color code it, you know, draw animals all over it, whatever. You know, it's yours, go wild with it. So, here we go for today, all right? I wanted to review with you a little bit because our first topic um, requires that you remember some of these things, all right? When you write an equilibrium expression, let's say for KC, <coughs> molarity of your products divided by molarity of your reactants, okay? And I want you all to understand that at different points in a chemical reaction, your reactants and products are not going to have the same molarity the entire time. Their molarities are going to change as time goes on. And once they reach equilibrium, then they will stabilize. So when you Eventually, when we do start plugging numbers into an expression, what molarities do you plug in? You plug in molarities at equilibrium. Now, there is such a thing called a reaction quotient, which is abbreviated with a capital Q. And guys, a reaction quotient is calculated exactly the same way that KC would be calculated. Molarities of products divided by molarities of your reactants, but the difference is the molarities you would plug in would not be molarities at equilibrium. They would be molarities at some other point in the reaction. Now usually 
the molarities that you plug in are going to be your initial conditions. Like, what are the molarities of my reactants and products right as the reaction is beginning? It doesn't have to be initial conditions to be plugged into a Q, um, a Q calculation. It just has to be not at equilibrium, but they are typically initial conditions. That's just something very common. And if any of you are wondering, you know, if it, you know, this chapter is all about equilibrium. Why would we ever want to do a calculation for something not at equilibrium? Well, Q is a very helpful number to know because I can compare it to the value of K, that equilibrium constant, and Depending on if Q is less than K, greater than K, equal to K, that can tell me where the reaction needs to move in order to get to equilibrium. Okay? For example, maybe I have not made enough products yet to reach equilibrium. So if I need to make more products, that means the reaction needs to move in the forward direction. Use up the reactants to make more products. Or maybe the value of Q tells me that I've made too many products and I need to shift back in the other direction. That I've got too many reactants, or products, excuse me, and not enough reactants. So I would need to shift in the reverse direction. Okay? It tells me which direction does this equation need to move in order to get to equilibrium? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make up some numbers here. I'm going to use a very simple reaction. A goes to B. And if I asked you to write either a Q expression or a K expression, they would look exactly the same way. The molarity of my products divided by the molarity of my reactants. And I'm going to just make up a number. Let's say that the equilibrium constant equals 2. I just made that number up. And now I'm going to make up some molarities for these things. I'm going to say that my reactants are at a molarity of 4, and my products are at a molarity of 1. Okay. If I were to plug these numbers in, 1 divided by 4. In decimal form, what do you get? 0.25. Is 0.25 less than, greater than, or equal to the number 2? Less than. Q is less than K. All right? And guys, I cannot stress enough, I really don't want you to memorize this. I want you to understand it. Having a Q value less than K means I have not made enough products yet. Think about it. Products are in the numerator, right? If your number, your quotient is too small, either your number in the numerator is too small or the number in the denominator is too big. However you approach it, it doesn't matter. The point is, I need to use up some of my reactants, make this number smaller, and make this number bigger. In order to reach equilibrium, I have not made enough products. I need to make some more. That means this reaction needs to shift in the forward direction, or you could say shift to the right, or you could say shift toward products. We're all saying the same thing. And that's the question you'll be asked. Sometimes this will be multiple choice, sometimes free response in a short answer kind of situation. 
where you'd be given information like this and the question would simply say, which direction will this reaction shift? You would say, to the right, because the reaction quotient is less than the equilibrium constant. I'm going to change the numbers. I'm going to say the reactants are at a molarity of 2 and the products are at a molarity of 10. Put the numbers in. 10 divided by 2 gives me 5. Do you agree that that number is greater than 2? Say yes. yes. Okay, good. That means... Again, I really want you to understand it conceptually. I don't want you to memorize it. Q being greater than K means I've gone too far in the forward direction. I've made too many products. My numerator is too big. My denominator is too small. If I have gone too far this way to fix that problem, I need to back up a little bit and shift to the left, or reverse, or towards reactants. Okay. That is what it needs to happen to reach equilibrium. Okay. Whoa. All right, I'm going to change the numbers one more time. I'm going to say that my products are 16 molar and my reactants are 8 molar. Okay? Do you agree that Q and K are now equal? That means there will be no shift forward or reverse. I am already at equilibrium. Guys, I chose these numbers for a reason to show you, just to remind you, that equilibrium does not mean your amounts of reactant and product are equal, or my concentrations are equal. Do you agree that they are not equal? Okay. They are definitely not equal, but they are at equilibrium. Remember, the definition of equilibrium just means the speed at which I'm moving this way is equal to the speed that I'm moving this way. Okay? Even once I have reached equilibrium, I will have more product than reactant. Because it has equilibrium has nothing to do with amount. So if you want to memorize this fine, I would really prefer that you just be able to understand it. Okay? But I can't force you to do that. So I want you to look at what a free response problem might look like. Okay? I am given an equation. It's already balanced. I am given a value for the equilibrium constant that's given to me right away. And then it says, in the experiment, I am given amounts of all three members of this reaction. They're all put into a two liter flask. And the question says, which direction will the reaction proceed? Which way will it shift to reach equilibrium? You are going to use all these numbers in this sentence to calculate what? Okay, after molarities. You're going to use those molarities to calculate Q. Compare Q to K, and that's going to give you your answer. So the first thing I would do is write the expression for this reaction. Before you plug in any numbers, write out products over reactants and then start crunching the numbers.
tell me, how does Q compare to K? Is it less than, greater than, or equal? Less than. Okay, less than, which means... We have too many products. No. We have too many products. I have too many reactants. I have too many... I have too many reactants or too many products? Too many reactants. So I need to use some of them up? That is a shift to the right. Q is less than K, it's a shift to the right. For those of you that have the PowerPoint slides, what is on this one and the next one is a list of steps for how to do a typical equilibrium problem. And I'm going to say something that really makes me cringe because I don't... I don't like to say this, okay? I am going to show you the way to do these problems, and that is the only way that you will do it, okay? I hate to say that because I don't like to say, like, you know, this is the way and it's the best way, and this is what we're doing, and nothing else is acceptable. I don't like saying that. But the college board recognizes this one method, and... It, truth be told, it's a fantastic method. It's great. I love it. It's very organized. It's very logical. But it's still, I still don't like to say that that is the only way because, you know, uh, people always have other ideas. But such is life in this room. That I'm going to show you an example problem. Whatever I write, you write. Okay? So here we go. I'm going to skip over these steps and I'm going to jump straight to a practice problem. So here we go. Are you ready? No, you don't. You're going to write well, what I do here and that'll be enough. Okay. It says type 1. There are two types. You don't need to memorize, like, okay, this is type 1, I do this, this is type 2, I do that. The method is the same for both types. It's just the where your unknown is will be in a slightly different place. So let's look at this one. I've got an equation. It's already balanced. And it says, in a certain experiment, this amount, this amount, this amount of all three members of this reaction, I'm given amounts, moles, they're placed in a one liter flask. So that's sort of my starting conditions. That's what I'm starting with. Some time goes by. It says at equilibrium, a certain amount of the product was found to be present calculate the equilibrium concentrations of my two reactants and they want a value for K, the equilibrium constant. This looks like a very complicated problem. It's actually very, very simple. So here we go. Whatever I write, you write. The first thing I'm going to do is just copy this equation down here because I'm going to put some things underneath of it, underneath it. I'm just going to copy it down. And on the left hand side, I'm going to write three letters. I, C, E. This is called an ICE table. Okay? It's an acronym. Anybody want to guess what I might stand for? Initial. Initial conditions. And let's be more specific. Initial molarities. So, initial. That's everything given to me in this first sentence. And I've made the numbers really easy. You don't even need a calculator. What is the molarity from the first sentence of SO2? Two. 
2 moles divided by 1 liter. Nice easy number. So I'm going to write 2 molar. How about oxygen? Okay, 1.5 moles divided by 1 liter. So 1.5 molar. And sulfur trioxide? 3 molar. Well, based on this chapter, what do you think E stands for? Equilibrium. So if I is initial and E is equilibrium, any guesses what C might be? It's not concentration. Change. Exactly. When you go from initial, time goes by, time goes by, to your equilibrium concentrations, a change takes place. All right, well, there's multiple ways that you can do this next step, but I'm going to show you what is typically going to happen. I want you to assume, because 99% of these reactions do, shift to the right or in the forward direction to reach equilibrium. I want you to assume that, and I will explain in just a minute how you know if you've made the wrong assumption. Okay, but I want you to assume that it's going to shift in the forward direction. Tell me, does that mean that my reactants will be decreasing or increasing if I'm moving to the right? Decreasing. I'm going to be using them up to make more products. Okay, so you're saying that my reactants will decrease. That means on this C for change line, I'm going to put a minus sign under this one, a minus sign under this one, because those are both decreasing, and over here, a plus sign. Okay? I want you all to notice, here's another way that I can actually be with 100% certainty sure that this is shifting forward. When I get to equilibrium, I have 3.5 moles. Look how many I had initially. I had 3, and then I have 3.5. So this should be increasing. Okay. Now, these two are decreasing. This one is increasing. By how much? I have no idea. I, I truly don't. I have no idea. So watch what I'm going to write. 2 is going to decrease by 2x. x because I have no idea. Where do you think that 2 came from? And it did not come from here. From the coefficient. So what should I put here? Minus x or 1x, whatever. How about here? plus 2x, and then I'm going to draw a line, and on this equilibrium line, I'm just going to condense this down. At equilibrium, sulfur dioxide will have a molarity of 2 minus 2x. At equilibrium, oxygen will have a concentration of 1.5 minus x. At equilibrium, sulfur trioxide will have a concentration of 3 plus 2x. Okay? Now that's great, but that doesn't help me solve this problem because they want actual numbers here. I, if I don't know what x is, I can't figure this out. Idea? Got it. Come back to this second sentence. I have information at equilibrium, meaning on this line, SO3 has this many moles. Well, what's the concentration, the molarity of SO3 at equilibrium? Say it with confidence. 
3.5 moles divided by 1 liter is 3.5. Can't I solve for x now? Yeah, I don't even need a calculator. Or you shouldn't. Okay. Can I find these concentrations now? Yes, I can. Chris, your question. Why does the first two not equal? Because there's no such thing as conservation of molarity. There's conservation of mass and conservation of energy. Molarities are not conserved. Okay? Good question. Again, I don't even need a calculator for this. How nice. Equilibrium concentration of SO2 is going to be 1.50 molar. Oxygen, 1.25. So there's the first part of my answer. The last thing they want is a value, a number for K. Do not try to calculate anything for K until you've written the expression for K. Remember, expression means no numbers yet, no calculating yet. What would I write for that expression? What goes in the numerator? No numbers. No numbers. C? Okay, thank you. SO3 squared over what? Okay. Times or plus? Times oxygen. Okay. Now I'm going to tie this back to what I said at the very beginning of class. We need a value for this K. If you're unsure which molarities to plug in, like there's a lot of numbers here, which ones do I plug in? Remember, K is molarities at what point in a chemical reaction? At equilibrium. You know, that's what's beautiful about these charts. You know exactly where to look. And don't I have molarities at equilibrium now? Yes, I do. Plug them in. Okay? Now, this might answer your question. Hold that thought. The two times that I have already taught or gone through this quest, this problem, I've gotten the same question both times. What are the units for K? Well, technically, you can, well, not technically. We're not going to worry about units for K, all right? On an AP exam, units are not required for an equilibrium constant. However, for those of you that are inquiring minds that want to know, that are overachievers, I will tell you what the units technically would be. These numbers that got plugged in here, what are their units? What are these? Okay, they're molarities. Molarity squared over molarity squared times another molarity. This cancels out, so what would it be? One over molarity, or inverse molarity. And can you all see that depending on what the coefficients are for each equation, that the units 
would be different for every reaction. I mean, I could have something squared, something to the fifth, times something divided by something to the sixth, to the seventh. I mean, it can get crazy. Okay? But units are not required. So, what I'm going to have you do, the next problem, which I'm going to have you practice on your own, uses the same reaction but gives you some different situations. Before I let you try that one, I want to say something about this assumption that we made up here. Okay? For this particular problem, assuming that it went in the forward direction was the correct one, and I really could see that because I could see that I was told that my product was initially 3 and I was told that equilibrium it was 3.5 which means this needs to be a plus but let's say that you didn't recognize that okay and you assume that it went in the forward direction and I want you to imagine that it was a problem where that assumption was wrong okay you assumed it went forward and actually it was a reaction that had to shift to the left there's a number of ways that you could catch yourself and realize that you've made the wrong assumption. Here is one of them. You do, you know, minus, minus, plus, you get down here, you solve for x, and x comes out to be negative. That doesn't make any sense. x can't be negative. That would be a clue you've made the wrong assumption. Here's another clue. What if you did all this, you go through, you solve for x, and x comes out to be a ridiculous number. Like, let's say x came out to equal 10. Try putting 10 right in there. 1.5 minus 10. That gives me a negative molarity. People, there's no such thing as a negative molarity. Okay? That would mean, okay, I made the wrong assumption. This should have been going this way. How does that change this right here? Plus 2x, plus x, and this would be minus, okay? Then you could go back and fix your numbers. <laughs> So I'm going to tell you guys that 99% of your problems are going to shift in the forward direction. Sometimes you come across one that goes to the left. So try this one. Same reaction, different numbers, different situation, but the same sulfur dioxide reaction. Try it. Anybody feel like something is missing? Yes. What? How come oxygen's not even mentioned in this first sentence. We're given no initial data about oxygen. You know what that means? No, wrong. <laughs> it means there's none of it. It's still part of the reaction. It still needs to be in your ice table, but the initial molarity is zero. I want to point out a number of things that I heard some of you already picking up, which is great. Okay? Think about when you're trying to decide which way am I going to put my arrow, to the right or to the left. Sometimes you'll have a number in all three slots and it won't be so obvious. Again, there are ways you can figure it out. But this one should be obvious because think about it. If this is starting out as zero, and you're going to make that assumption that usually we do, that it goes this way, this would decrease, right? Your reactants would decrease. How could that possibly decrease below zero? There's no such thing as a negative molarity. So which way does it have to go? To the left.
folks, let me just make sure that you are, are clear on something. If this was a free response question, and let's say it was like an eight point question, one point, one point, one point, the other five points would be showing this ice table, probably four points somewhere in here, and one point for showing that expression, okay? So, again, I hate to say that you have to show an ice table, and especially as we do this more and more, you're going to get a lot faster, and you're going to be like, I don't need an ice table. Yeah, you do, okay? 